Hi, my name's Dave, and in this video we'll be looking at calculating earnings per share. More specifically, we'll be looking at calculating basic earnings per share, or EPS, including a rights issue. In this case, we have an after-tax profit for the year ended 30 June 2003 of £22,550,200, profit attributable to non-controlling interest of £325,450, and a profit attributable to members of the parent entity of £22,224,750. At the end of the previous year, the basic EPS was £5.69. At the start of the year, there were 3,225,000 ordinary shares outstanding, as well as 600,000 8% convertible preference shares. These were issued at £1 each and classified as equity. On the 1st of January 2000X3, existing shareholders were offered one ordinary share for every five held for £2.50 per share. The share price at the time of the rights issue was £3.75, and all shareholders took up the offer. IAS 33 is the standard which deals with calculating EPS, and paragraph 10 tells us that basic earnings per share shall be calculated by dividing profit or loss attributable to ordinary equity holders of the parent entity, the numerator, by the weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding, the denominator, during the period. We can set that up as a formula, with profit or loss as a numerator, and ordinary shares as the denominator. We're going to look at each in turn, starting with the numerator. According to paragraph 12, for the purpose of calculating basic earnings per share, the amounts attributable to ordinary equity holders of the parent entity in respect of a profit or loss from continuing operations attributable to the parent entity, and b profit or loss attributable to the parent entity, shall be the amounts in a and b adjusted for the after-tax amounts of preference dividends, differences arising on the settlements of preference shares, and other similar effects of preference shares classified as equity. So turning back to our example, for calculating earnings for the EPS calculations, we start with profit attributable to members of the parent entity. As the preference shares in this case were classified as equity, we deduct the dividends from this profit figure, as required by paragraph 10. The dividends were 8% on 600,000, which equals 48,000 pounds. This leaves us with earnings of 22,176,750 pounds, which is the numerator value for the EPS calculation and something you should keep stored away for later on in this video. Now that we've dealt with the numerator, it's time to move below the line and check out how we calculate the denominator. Paragraph 10 tells us that for the purpose of calculating basic earnings per share, the number of ordinary shares shall be the weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding during the period. But depending on how the shares were issued, it's not quite as straightforward as that. And that's because paragraph 26 requires that adjustments be made when there are events, other than the conversion of potential ordinary shares, that have changed the number of ordinary shares outstanding, without a corresponding change in resources. A good example of this is a bonus issue, because the number of shares outstanding has increased, however there was no investment by the shareholders. A rights issue isn't quite the same because there is additional investment. However, IAS 33 paragraph A2 notes that a rights issue with an exercise price less than fair value contains a bonus element. As the exercise price of 250 is less than the fair value of 375, there is a bonus element in this case, and we do need to make an adjustment for it. So what does that mean in practice? The easiest way to work this out is with the following table. For each set of shares, add in the periods of time that they were on issue until the next set of shares was issued. Then work out the days for that line. For example, the period for the first line begins at the 1st of July 2000X2 and goes up until the day before the rights issue occurred, the 31st of December 2000X2 a period of 184 days. We then add in the number of shares for that set, in this case 3,225,000, and add this to the cumulative column amount, in this case it will be 3,225,000. We then need to add in the rights adjustment factor. 
Now, if you're not familiar with calculating the bonus adjustment factor, which you do with the bonus issue, don't worry about it because this is very different. To calculate the rights adjustment factor, the fair value per share immediately before the exercise of rights is divided by the theoretical X rights fair value per share. We already have the 375 fair value, but we need to find the denominator. To do this, we add the fair value of outstanding shares prior to exercise to the proceeds from the exercise of the rights and divide that whole amount by the total number of shares outstanding after the exercise of the rights. In this case, the fair value of outstanding shares is the 3,225,000 shares multiplied by the 375 share price and the proceed amount is the 645,000 shares issued, so one for five on the 3.225 million. So the 645,000 shares issued at the 250 issue price. Turning to the denominator, we add the 3,225,000 and the 645,000 additional shares issued. This ends up with a theoretical X right value, X rights value of three pounds 54. For those playing along at home, this has been rounded to two decimal places. If you're keeping all your decimal places, you'll see your answers start to diverge slightly from what we've got here. The rights adjustment factor is then 375, the share price, divided by the 354, the theoretical X rights price or value, to give you 106. Again, this has been rounded to two decimal places. The final column, the weighted average number of ordinary shares, is the days in the period divided by 365, multiplied by the cumulative shares in the row, and multiplied by the rights adjustment factor. This yields 1,723,299. This process is then repeated for the shares issued due to the exercise of the rights. With the exception, we don't have to calculate the rights adjustment factor. We assume it's one. In this case, 181 divided by 365 and multiplied by 3,870,000 yields 1,919,096. Adding the weighted average amounts together, we end up with 3,642,395. To calculate the basic EPS, we then take the earnings we calculated of 22,176,750 pounds and divide it by the weighted average shares of 3,642,395, which we just did, which gives us an EPS in the current year of six pounds nine. Because of the rights issue, we also need to restate the comparative EPS for last year. This originally was £5.69. To restate, we divide the original by the rights adjustment factor, which gives us a restated comparative EPS of £5.37. And that's calculating basic EPS, including a rights issue.